cosplay competitions. It is the time where you can make a cosplay and then show it off and maybe, just maybe, you will place. But how do you place? Well, in today's video, we're going to talk from the judge's perspective about what we, the judges, will be assessing you on. And make sure you get to at least point four because that's when it starts getting real juicy about things that we actually don't talk about all that much, but it is used within the judging. G'day everyone, welcome back to another Catch Up with Kiralee. If you're new here, hi, I'm Kiralee and on this channel, we talk about all things cosplay, costuming and sewing related. So today's video, I'm going to be talking about my experience as a judge for cosplay competitions. We're going to look at in-person competitions, both ones that have a pre-judging section and also just walking on and the judges are looking at you. And also we're going to look at e-competitions, online competitions, if you will, because at the moment that is what it's all about. Also, today's video is going to be about the crafting of the cosplay rather than, you know, performance cosplay competitions, but certainly some of these points will still be valid for these types of competitions because usually it's like 50% performance and 50% craftsmanship anyway. So enjoy, listen up, you might learn a thing or two. So let's stop talking and let's just jump right in to point number one, which is the cleanness of your work. I have and will continue along with my fellow judges that I've judged with, will always give a simple and clean costume a placement over something that is complicated but messy. Let me explain. So the very first thing, kind of sub point to this, is iron your seams. Oh, please iron your seams. We know when you have not ironed your seams, they are making it poof out in a weird kind of area. We know it, we don't like it, we wanna see it nice flat where it should be flat. So iron those seams, please. And if you're doing armor, make sure you prime. It, it's basically the same sort of thing as ironing seams, prime your armor. Another thing for sewing is make sure you hem your garments. Now I know this seems like a really simple thing, but you would be surprised how many people will walk onto a stage with their hems not done. And so we can see this by like the strings of the fabric shedding as they walk on. I have seen this and I have cringed because parts of their costume are absolutely beautiful, but I can't give them any points in terms of placement because of the fact that literally like half of your dress is still off stage because it's caught up because you didn't hem the thing. Make sure you hem the bottoms of your skirts, your pants, your sleeves, your collar, just everything. Make sure there's no raw edges showing. Which brings me to the next sub point, which is make sure you line where appropriate. Especially if it's a big competition where there is pre-judging, I'm gonna get up there. I'm gonna be looking at your shoulder seam, flip it open and see how you've done that shoulder seam. If you're in front of me and you're wearing a long skirt, guess what? I'm going to flip the hem of your skirt and I may even get up there to see how you've done the structural support. All of this is taken into consideration. Speaking of structural support, make sure you are wearing the correct structural support. If you have a big fluffy dress, make sure that you're wearing a crinoline and also a petticoat just to make sure that it gives you the right shape. And also whilst we're talking about structural support, make sure that you interface what needs to be interfaced and that you're using the right kind of interfacing for the project that you're doing. So for example, the collar that is on a lightweight kind of shirt would be very different in terms of interfacing as what you would use for a trench coat or long jacket. If you're unsure, do your research before you start sewing. And if you are going to be using iron-on interfacing, make sure you do a tester before you iron that thing onto your fabric. Because if you iron it on and it is so clearly there, that's going to really stick out like a sore thumb. And frankly, we will not be incredibly impressed by that. I would say if you're entering a competition, I would, you know, pick a sewing interfacing over an iron-on interfacing even though it's a bit more work because of the fact that mm, it's probably going to work out a bit better. But that's just me. 
Of course, I've used iron-on interfacing and I've seen it in competitions and it's all been fine, but I just have also seen it where the glue has kind of seeped through and it has kind of distorted the fabric slightly and that just, it's not great. So cleanliness, cleanliness is so important. Make it crisp, make it clean, give me something that is aesthetically pleasing to look at. I will also just point out that I don't mean having a dirty costume like it's meant to be dirty, like it's weathered. That That's not what I mean in this situation when I talk about clean work. Weathering is fantastic and I will totally give points where it's, where it's needed for that. Tip number two, make sure you're using the right material for what you're making. This point is pretty self-explanatory. For example, don't make a jacket out of lightweight cotton. Don't do a summer dress out of block out curtain. It doesn't flow the right way. It doesn't look right. Just don't do it. Even if the fabric is cheap and it suits your budget, maybe think about spending a little bit of extra money, get a fabric that is more suitable and go with that. Tip number three, don't be afraid to add some bling or maybe a little bit of something extra. Detailing is so good when it comes to judging. If we can see that you've done some detailing, that's really nice. We love it. That's gonna give you some extra points. The only thing I will say to that though is don't go overboard. Now, of course, this is subjective, but essentially make sure that when you're making these costumes and you're adding all the bling and the applique and everything like that, you are not deviating too much from the design so that it's no longer recognizable as the character that you're trying to portray. Tip number four, new skills alone won't impress us. <gasps> oh no, I said it, but it's true. If you've learned a new skill for this cosplay, awesome, amazing, good work on you. But if you have not executed it correctly, basically you need to be able to pull it off and pull it off well for us to be really impressed. And by all means, do tell us. Do tell us that it's a new skill because we will be impressed that you have learned a new skill and that you have accomplished it really, really nicely. It may not be perfect, but even if it's really nice, we're gonna say, tick, that's a point there. But if you learn a new skill and it's mediocre, it may actually make the rest of your costume not look as polished. And because of that, you will lose marks. Tip number five, own designs rarely win. Now this hurts me because I love own designs, <laughs> but it's true. And let me explain why. As a judge, we need a clear reference image of what you're trying to achieve. So we can judge you on where you've gone right and where you maybe have missed the mark. And ideally, we're using one reference image that we will have as a printout, maybe two if there's a back shot. When we have an own design, it can come across as a bit wishy-washy. It's kind of like, I was inspired by summer and the color purple. All right, that's great. And your costume is fabulous, but it's all within your mind. It's all within your head. How do we know if you got it right? It's too subjective. And because of that, it's very hard for judges to justify why that costume would place over someone who has a clear reference image that we can judge them upon. Now, don't get me wrong. There have been own designs that have won competitions before and lots that have placed. And that is because they have brought a really clear concept art to the table. That's because they've said, this is what I'm achieving. This is my inspiration. Judge me. And we've gone. Yep. Yep. That works. As long as you've got a reference image and you nail it, then you're in the running. Tip number six, confidence goes a really long way. And I will preference this by saying confidence and arrogance are two different things, but they are generally on the same kind of wavelength. Make sure you don't tip over from confidence to arrogance. Let's break this point into the three different types of competitions that we're seeing. So firstly, let's talk about in-person competitions that have a pre-judging section. 
in the pre-judging section, the judges will come around, have a look at your costume, flip up hems, have a look and see how you constructed things. You have this opportunity to tell them everything about your cosplay. Make sure you use every second that they're there with you. Talk about how you constructed things, give them a little bit of detail about why you did this, make sure that you point out any new skills as long as you hit the nail on the head for it, and make sure that you talk about all the complicated bits. Point out the applique, point out the diamantes, point out the ruffles, point out which type of fabrics you used and why you use them. Just keep talking. The judges will leave when they need to leave, when they need to move on to the next contestant. But I can tell you from experience on both sides, it is very awkward when you are no longer talking and the judge is still looking at your outfit. It's kind of like, oh my gosh, what have I done? Have I done something terrible? Why are they looking at the back so intensely? What happened to the back? Has my zip broke? It hasn't. We're just saying how you did the zipper. So. Talk, 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 and talk yourself up. Don't say, oh, I did this wrong, whoopsies. Just, no, no, don't, don't, no. Accentuate the positives, eliminate the negatives, that kind of thing. All right, now let's talk about walk-ons. So this is where you're on stage, you walk on, you show off your costume, and you walk off, and that's all the judge sees of you. That's it, that's all she wrote. I personally hate these competitions the most because I don't think it gives a fair representation of the work that you have put into a cosplay. And sometimes it does feel the larger than life ones are the ones that win, even if they aren't necessarily constructed perfectly, because of the fact that the judges can't see it up close and personal. But we do the best that we can. <laughs> And that's because I'm mostly a seamstress, more than like an armor or like massive like tech one. That's just me. I'm not having any kind of go or, sh or throwing any shade at people who do those kind of suit. I think they're amazing. I wouldn't even know where to start with that and I can appreciate it. I look at them and I'm like, that's a really interesting construction. But I've also heard some horror stories where people have constructed them and they have not necessarily paid attention to safety all that much. Like the shoe being constructed around two buckets that they're standing on. How that costume did not fall in on itself, I still don't know. Sorry, I digress. Let us move forward. So when you walk out, make sure that you hit your poses. You do one at the front, one to the back, and maybe one that's three quarters, and that should be enough. Just make sure you hit those poses, you show off your entire cosplay and also any props, but make sure that when you've got your prop, you're not hiding your, your body behind it. You're not also like closing in on yourself. Because number one, it doesn't show confidence, but it also hides any kind of detailing work that you might have on your body. Show off every single part of your cosplay that you possibly can and don't move too fast because you want the judges to actually see your cosplay and see the detailing that you've done on that. Now let's talk about online competitions. Submit as many photos as you can and just like the walk-on side of things, make sure that you're capturing the front, the back and any kind of detailing that you can. The other thing is make sure you post work in progress photos. Now these may never be used within judging and realistically they shouldn't be. However, I will say that judges are cosplayers too usually and we are massive stalkers <laughs> in the sense that we want to see how you constructed something. So post it on social media. It can't hurt you. Except if you tag the judges in your posts as you're creating it before the competition and be you're like, Hey, look, I'm making this cosplay for this competition that you're judging. Remember me? Don't do that. That's, that's not cool and you will definitely lose points for that. Let us find you on our own terms if we were to do that. And lastly, rule number seven, and this seems like it's a common kind of rule. Don't be a jerk. I mean, it goes for cosplay in general, but it also goes for cosplay competitions. Why? Well, very simply put, the judges don't like jerks. The other competitors don't like jerks. The people who run the overall event don't like jerks. At the end of the day, the judges will not pick someone who they 
believe has been rude to staff, to other contestants, to them, to the overall sponsor of the event or the events, you know, themselves, because of the fact that whoever they pick to place will essentially be the representative of the competi competition and also the event itself. This is a little bit harder with the online competitions, but it still happens. And frankly, once you get a little bit of a black mark against your name, it's going to be really hard for you to get rid of it. So don't be a jerk. So in person events, make sure that you are kind and courteous to everyone in person. You compliment other people about their costumes. You wish them the very best. You help each other out. You know, if someone has a cosplay malfunction, don't sit there and laugh. Get up and help them because your sportsmanship says much more about your character than the people who are in the corner doing nothing. And trust me, the judges see that as well. For online events, if you know who else is going to be entering the competition, don't go to their pages and start, you know, trying to psych them out of their competition entry. It's not cool. And guess what? It will be reported. It will come back to the event themselves or even the judges. Don't do it. Just be kind. Don't be a jerk. Jerks are troublemakers. Nobody likes them. I hope that you've enjoyed those seven tips. If you have been a cosplay judge as well, I'd really like your input as well. So please leave them in the comments below. As for everyone else, make sure you give this video a bit of a like and say hello and all of that good stuff. I'll see you all in the next video. See you later. Bye.